What is the number one fear in adolescence today? Number one fear. Now, it used to be public speaking the fear, or the fear of death or the fear of heights. Number one fear today is, come on, uh, youth, chime in, anyone? It's called FOMO. FOMO. The fear of missing out. You get to an age where you enjoy JOMO, the joy of missing out because you don't care. I don't care. I don't care what's going on. They're so hung on the fear of missing out, the fear of being disconnected. But in all reality, who they're disconnected from the most is from dad. And that's where the problem started. Because there is no relationship, there is no connectedness, therefore they're looking for approval outside the home. And if you wonder why the kid who's 16 years old is already promiscuous and having sex out there with a bunch of kids, it's because something is going on in the home. You have to recalibrate and you have to ask yourself, what is it? Some of you are completely as dads, and I'm speaking to the dads right now, completely in tune with what's going on with, you know, whether it's in football or, or even in the White House, but you are oblivious to what's going on in your house. You got to recalibrate. Recalibrate. What are you here for? What is your purpose in life? You've got to recalibrate. See, because you don't know what you don't know, and ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance steals, kills, and destroys. It's ignorance. The enemy comes through ignorance. And the prophet Hosea in Hosea 4, 6 said, my people perish due to what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of understanding. Understand this. If you cannot define it, you will never defeat it. Let me say it again. If you cannot define it, you will never defeat it. You have to be able to define your problem. If you can't define it, you can't defeat it. You go to the doctor, something hurts, they run an x-ray, they find the tumor, they extract. We have to do the same thing, dads. We have to do the same thing. This message is for you. We have to do the same thing. We have to go before the Lord like David said, examine me, O oh God, Put my thoughts to the test and show me if there's any sin, if there's any iniquity, if there's any evil in me. Because whatever it is, is holding me back. So every day I, I can picture David going before God and saying, examine me, O oh God, and put my thoughts to the test. Recalibrating every day, recalibrating every day. Because you can't define it, you will never defeat it. My greatest purpose isn't that my kids will become popular, wealthy, Go to the best universities or land the dream job. That's not my goal. That, 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 that's, that's not even a thought. My goal, my purpose is to lead them to God through Christ. That they would become everything that God has called them to be. But I know that I know that I know that in order to do that, I must become a disciple so that therefore I can become a teacher. Because if I'm not a disciple, what do I teach? You've got to be a disciple. You see, I'm like the apostle John who said in 1 John 3, 4, I have no greater joy to hear that my children walk in the truth. There's no greater joy. No greater joy. The other stuff is, is, is not important. You see, I'm going to focus once again on, on the dads. I want you to understand that your son will become like you. Your daughter, your daughter will marry someone like you. 75% of the time. Actually, actually, 75% of the time, people marry their worst parent. The question is, which one is the worst one? But that's the truth. 75% of the time, you're, right now you're thinking, oh, come back, come back, re-engage, 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 re-engage. I shouldn't have said that because now you're thinking, uh, mom or dad, mom or dad, mom or dad, mom or dad, mom or dad. Dads, you have the power to impact your children for good or for bad. Bless them or curse them, lift them up, tear them down. Either you fill them with hope or you fill them with despair. Deuteronomy 39, 10 says, I have set before you life and blessings and choose life that you and your children might live. It's a choice. What am I choosing today? I can choose, now those of you who know me know that I'm a marathon runner. I can choose to train for marathons or I can choose to sit on the couch and eat Doritos. 
Now, whatever I choose is going to influence my kids. Now, if you ask David, my oldest, and Daniel, my youngest, they'll tell you that they're both runners. And they, in their minds, think that it runs through their blood, that it's genetics, that it runs through their DNA. And hey, if that's what they want to think, that's fine, as long as they keep running. They take care of their bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit. They keep running, keep running, keep running and doing. But if I sit on the couch and eat Doritos, guess what they'll do? They'll sit on the couch and eat Doritos. So I want to make sure that I choose life so that they too may live. 